This video is brought to you by Patreon. Hello, my name's Jeffrey. This is my channel Recollect, and you're tuned in for another episode of I Beat Every Non-GTA Rockstar Game. Next up is not only one of the most obscure titles, but quite possibly the hardest title Rockstar has ever released. Believe it or not, there's a lot to talk about with this, at first glance, simple looking game. Beating it was way more exhausting than anticipated. Rockstar Presents Table Tennis is a 2006 video game brought to us by the people responsible for Smuggler's Run, Midnight Club, and Red Dead, that being Rockstar San Diego. To say people were shocked that Rockstar would make a game about ping pong after all their previous mature titles would be an understatement. This game's standout nature is what has drawn me to it ever since I discovered its existence. Table Tennis was released first on the Xbox 360 in May of 2006, then later put on the Wii in October of the following year. The two versions seem nearly identical besides some advanced control options on the Wii in order to incorporate motion controls. I went with the more HD Xbox version on my Series X which has the game looking great even compared to today's games. Now, I do have some experience with this game previously. Way back, I used to sink some time into the co-op multiplayer, but that was about it. When returning to the title, I kept thinking there's no way a single player story mode exists. In a game like this, I just don't see it working. And I was sorta right, but there is a mode almost equivalent to it. The mode options given to you include an exhibition mode where you challenge AI opponents in one-off unranked matches at a difficulty you choose, easy, medium, hard, or expert, as sort of a quick play option. Within the exhibition mode is where you can have a friend join and play against you co-op style like I used to do back in the day. The other mode is tournament. This is definitely the closest option to a traditional progressing story mode, so that's what I went with for this challenge. Worth mentioning is how there's actually also an online multiplayer mode where you play versions of the two modes with people over Xbox Live. With all that said, time to get into the nitty gritty of a game no one talks about. A game many don't know exists, a game so weird and different I couldn't wait to play it again. To explain to you how the tournament mode is the story mode equivalent, here's how it works. In this mode, you play through a series of increasingly more difficult circuits. It starts with the amateur, aka easy circuit, then to the rookie, aka medium circuit, then pro, aka hard circuit, then finally with the all-star, aka expert circuit. Within each circuit, you have to be a certain amount of opponents. In easy, you play against four opponents, in medium, six opponents, hard, nine opponents, and expert 10 opponents. Something I need to make clear early is this game has very little info about it online. Throughout my time playing, I really struggled looking up and finding any helpful tips, full walkthroughs, useful strategies, really anything. There is a small following for the game online, but in terms of info on how to beat the game, there's very little. So when I started on my first match in the easy circuit, I assumed that to beat the game, I'd have to play through all 29 opponents and that would give me some sort of confirmation that I completed the game's main mode. I wanted to find proof of this theory, but I am still yet to find a video of someone playing this game to completion. So I made it my mission to be potentially the first ever documented case of someone beating Rockstar Presents Table Tennis. Now there isn't all too much to the actual gameplay and mechanics here in Table Tennis, it's standard ping pong for the most part. Throughout the game you have the option of playing as 11 different characters within 19 different venues. The 
characters are unlocked through beating the circuits, while the venues and various cosmetics are unlocked via various in-game challenges. Depending on the character you choose, the feel of your movement and power will differ surprisingly a lot. These avatars aren't just reskins. Who you choose really does matter here. While playing, you'll end up just finding a character whose stats work best for you. To give you an idea of what the typical gameplay loop is for table tennis, here's a breakdown. To make your way through the circuits, you have to beat your opponent's best two out of three times. To win a match, you need to score 11 points with at least a two point gap. Also, the serve switches every two points. Like traditional table tennis, volleys are not allowed, meaning you can't hit the ball before it bounces, and also your character won't hit a ball that's going out. The controls for the game are very interesting. They're tricky to understand at first, but contain just the right amount of depth. Using your left joystick, you control your feet position and where you're aiming the ball. That takes some getting used to, but is the right control scheme in my opinion. Then you have the option to either use your A, B, X, Y buttons or right joystick to apply top spin, left spin, right spin, and back spin. For those directional hits, I almost always went with the button options over the joystick. Additional moves include soft hits, which are pulled off using the left bumper, smash shots, which are available when your opponent pops the ball up in a high position. There's also focus shots, which are pulled off using your right bumper and allow for quick returns and allow for easier counters on tough shots. In order to pull off a focus shot, you have to drain your focus meter, which you fill with good gameplay. There's also a counter spin mechanic where you apply the same spin to the ball that it was sent with, but I found this mechanic completely useless and way too difficult during fast play. In terms of controls, that's about it. Other things to consider include the mechanic where your controller vibrates depending on how close your ball is to the border of the table, which I think is a neat idea and a very useful feature. Also know that after each point you will be played a replay which can be skipped. That's really all you need to know for how the game is played. You eventually try to combine all those different controls and mechanics together until playing and scoring feels effortless. I think these controls are the perfect amount of difficulty for someone playing the game casually as well as for someone who wants to really master the game. And oh boy, you better get those controls mastered because this game is no joke difficult. Before I break down my journey on how I beat the game, let me first list you reasons why table tennis is potentially the hardest Rockstar title. I've already mentioned the difficulty increasers like the left stick aiming method and the lack of online information leading to a very confusing playthrough, but there are five more reasons I took note of that, for me, made my time playing a bit hellish. Starting first with a small difficulty element, the power bar. In order to choose the power at which you hit the ball, you have to get the timing needed for the power bar. Achieving a full power hit with some characters is no problem, but with others, it can be a massive pain in the ass. Second is having to deal with some really slimy shots. Extremely close edge shots are a part of real table tennis, but man, sometimes they're non-stop here. Of course, you can pull them off on your opponents as well, but when landed on you, coming from a bot, it can feel a tad unfair at times. Third is the sometimes brutal time wasting that occurs with the needed to win best out of three games mechanic. You can sometimes go on some long rallies, which turn into long games that can really be all for nothing if you don't win the needed two out of three games. This is a part of the sport, but wow is it depressing when 20 to 30 minutes are sunk into an opponent and it ends up being for nothing when you fail. I do appreciate the ability to even be able to restart a match in the middle of a circuit, but it's only useful for the first out of potentially three matches. Fourth is the inclusion of the goddamn shot cam. The shot cam is where when a cool shot is coming up, the game switches into this cinematic slow which is meant to look badass, but in actuality is a flow destroyer. I missed countless shots because of this damn shot cam. It alone almost ruined the game for me. What really sucked is I kept reading online that if you want to earn achievements for this game, you have to keep the settings default, so I refused to turn off the shot cam. I thought it was required to keep in order to be default, but I later discovered that it is one of the few settings you are allowed to toggle off. I really just wish the game specified that 
that in the beginning because I hated dealing with it. And lastly, my biggest and I'd say most legit complaint is how once you pick a character for a circuit, you're committed to that person for the whole circuit. In the early game, it's fine choosing and sticking with one character, but later I desperately wanted to get off the person I chose. I get why you have to stick with one person for fairness reasons, but forcing the player to stick with one person for up to 10 matches in a row is just a blatant anti-fun feature that really pissed me off the route. A lot of these features I mentioned are somewhat valid game design decisions that are faithful to the sport. I'm just saying they made things frustrating, that's all. Now, I want to preface something. A lot of the struggle I'm soon to detail can be chalked up to a skill issue. I want to make it clear I am not very good at this game. I don't claim to be either. Please, please, please know that. With that said, let's start at the beginning of my journey beating Rockstar Presents Table Tennis. Upon selecting Lu Ping from China as my first character, I decided to start with the game's training mode instead of diving straight into the first circuit. While being taught all the controls and mechanics I covered earlier, I started gaining my skill back from my old co-op exhibition days. Upon completion, I felt ready to enter the easy circuit with my first opponent being Luke from France. As you can guess, these first couple of opponents were no problem whatsoever. The whole easy circuit, including Luke, Jesper from Sweden, Haley from the US and especially Kumi from Japan were all very easy to deal with. During those matches, I really started to get down the spin plus aim plus special move combo, and it really started to get fun. Of course, some rallies would take a while, and the gameplay would get a little monotonous, and you'd have to play the waiting game on the AI, but once I got in a good rhythm, it was rather effortless. I found myself standing mostly still, doing a little bit of educated button smashing as I call it, and getting into a sort of meditative autopilot mind state, where my muscle memory would kick in and play for me in a sense. I did attempt some strategies like aiming right with a right spin and aiming left with a left spin as some slimy prep for the inevitable hard incoming opponents, but for this first circuit, no crazy strats were needed. Going into the medium circuit, I decided to switch it up and play as Jurgen from Germany, who appears to on average have slightly higher stats than Lu Ping except for in the power category. First up in the circuit, and the first semi challenge I encountered was none other than Lu Ping. I still beat him with relative ease, but he showed me the game was increasing a bit in difficulty. My first loss came around two hours in when facing Haley for a second time. She beat me so bad I figured no more autopilot brain, I need to learn how to actually play. After dealing with Haley for a while, I finally beat her using the slimy left and right spins, spamming the focus shots when available, and by simply waiting for her to mess up. My next foe was Luke for a second time, and oh boy was he tricky. Our first game had us both with a win going into the final match, which ended with a depressing 9-11 loss. After that choke, I realized that if I don't win the first game, I should just always restart. Honestly, if the opponent scored the first couple points in a game, also just reset the match. I then went back in and utilized every focus shot opportunity, every smash worthy lob, and purposely pushed Luke to put his ball off the board. This was the point where I started to feel my skill was maxing out at I realized the strategies I used earlier were not working as well as they once did. Regardless, I carried on. My next competitor was Suleiman from Egypt. He ended up being no challenge at all. I beat him twice in a row, each time by a lot. At this point, not just with him, but I realized how the bots would mess up in streaks. I don't know if the game was designed that way, but I definitely noticed it happened a few times. Anyway, next was Cassidy from Ireland. Unlike Suleiman, she was not quick and easy. The rallies with her would go on forever at times. Again, I started experimenting with strategies. I tried stepping away from the table more. I focused purely on topspin only because I kept reading online how the color you choose doesn't really impact much. It's all more dependent on aim. After reaching about an hour playing against her, I finally won but was exhausted. At this point, around four hours into the game, I needed a break. The gameplay was just getting so repetitive. I was so burnt out that I even even stepped away and played some other games for a while. I don't like doing that for this Rockstar Challenge, but some games call for it. Upon returning,
returning weeks later, it was time to face Jesper for a second time. Right away, I noticed that he was a next level opponent. He's not only fast on his feet, but his hits pack a punch. If I ever accidentally tossed him a softball, he'd make me immediately regret it. Jesper and I had so many heated matches where so many slime shots were exchanged. After 30 minutes, I finally beat him, signifying the end of the medium circuit. With that over, I was again allowed to choose a new character going into the hard circuit. I experimented with Kumi for a while, but quickly realized that she was no good. I then thought to myself, who do I want to play against the least? Probably Jesper, so I chose him to guarantee not having to face him again. Once I started with Jesper against Luke for a third time, I struggled. Jesper's serves were deadly, but his high power caused so many net shots. Out of anger, I switched back to Lu Ping and right away I proved my character selection theory when instead of being put back against Luke, I would be pitted against the man I didn't want to play with the most. Jesper. This was when I really tried looking deep online for any assistance on strategies. Using what I read, I tried using the right joystick for spins instead of the buttons, but nothing worked. I want to make note that after that break I took from this game, from there on I completely forgot focus shots were a mechanic. I know that's stupid, but that move just somehow erased from my brain during the break. One intriguing strategy I came across that it seems many high level players use is called the serve and ace trick. How it works is every character has a certain position they can stand in when serving that if given full power with the right aim and right spin can guarantee a point because the ball lands in an AI dead zone. I tried it for a while but had little luck with it. The precision required with your feet movement had to be perfect and I just couldn't get it down. My time returning to Lu Ping didn't last long as I switched back to Jesper for the remainder of the hard circuit. The first official opponent in the circuit was Haley for a third time. She wasn't much of a threat because I started to get Jesper down. I learned to stop charging every shot, which led to faster rallies, which resulted in quicker points. With Haley dealt with quickly, it was time for another go at Lu Ping. Since I wasn't playing as him, I felt what it was like to play against him in the hard circuit, and it wasn't fun. This was the point in the game, about six hours in, when the fun ended and the sweat truly began. My around an hour spent with Ping was a painful one. Just beating him one out of the three times took forever. Once I finally beat him two out of the three times, it was time for an even harder opponent, my old buddy Luke for a fourth time. Luke was absolutely brutal this time around. The rallies lasted an eternity. Playing against him had no element of fun to it at all. I desperately tried new strategies, but nothing was working. I kept trying to keep the rallies as fast as possible to make him mess up, but Luke was too quick. After a million restarts and several hours passed, I finally found an abusable move that did the trick. Because Luke was always getting close to going out, I started to only return his shots with backspin soft shots. Doing that caused him to smash his returns which very often went out. Using that allowed me to finally beat him after three and a half hours, but sadly the footage for the victory doesn't exist. I know that sounds shady, but while taking notes, my Elgato displayed an error message meaning my final match with Luke was corrupted. So you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. After that sweat fest was Kumi, who I made quick work of. After spending all that time on Luke, Kumi took a measly 10 10 minutes. After cruising past her, it was time to again face Suleiman. As you can guess, he was a way bigger pain in the ass this time around. It was crazy how many cheap shots Suleiman was dropping on me. There were so many close games between us. Our matches would often go to the third game where when defeated, I would want to die. After a grueling hour 45, I finally took him out. At this point with table tennis, I was beyond gassed. Now that five of the hard circuit opponents were down, aka 12 hours deep, my patience with this title was wearing thin. Despite that, I pushed forward. Finally, it was time to face someone new, this time Carmen from Brazil. Facing her was interesting. I would always find that during our first game, she was surprisingly easy to beat. Then when the second game hit, she would activate GOAT mode. Like I did with everyone I went against, I played her long enough to discover her weaknesses. Carmen in particular hates the lofty smash shots, so I tried to pull those off as much as possible. Doing that long enough allowed me to finally beat her after another 
two hours. As you can imagine, I was nearly brain dead at this point. I was so, so, so fed up playing as Jesper. I desperately wanted to use another potentially better character, but no, here you're locked in. As I entered the final bracket of the hard circuit, I was put against, for a second time, Cassidy. Thankfully, she wasn't all too difficult. Couple fails, but after a not too sweaty 40 minutes, I beat her. With me now nearing the end of the hard circuit, I was put against yet again another new opponent, that being Young Su from South Korea. Upon starting our first game, I knew something was different. Young Su was so ungodly difficult compared to every preceding opponent, I really thought beating him was going to be impossible. Just beating him once took me, wait for it, two hours and 40 minutes. And it was all for nothing once he beat me the next two games. I was done fed up, drained, and extremely exhausted playing against him. Hours were just flying by. I can't even begin to guess the amount of game restarts I had to do. In between matches, I dug deep online for strategies to use, but nothing worked on him. You have no idea how depressing it is to play an enemy this hard with no tips or tricks at your disposal. After around four hours spent on him, I knew I had to master the move of all moves. The previously mentioned serve an ace trick. In concept, if I could score at least twice every time I served, I could guarantee a win. So I began to experiment with the amount of steps needed to perfect the ungettable serve. After a while, I discovered if you stepped right about three steps and back at least one and a half steps, that would cause Young Su to miss every time. Achieving this every time was far from easy. It took a long time to master the perfect joystick maneuvering required to serve from the perfect location. I would repeat the ace trick over and over and over, gaining the needed double point. Then on his serve, I would just survive long enough to maybe get a point or just wait for him to mess up. While the hours passed and I was perfecting my strategy, I was constantly thinking of there being 11 more opponents to go, which all would most likely be harder than him. Just thinking about that made me want to cry. Using the ace plus waiting game method over the course of, get this, eight hours and 40 minutes, I would finally beat the South Korean god. The stress of going into a third game with each of us having one win, then pulling away with the final dub, led to maybe one of the most rewarding wins in my life. You have no clue the feeling of going against an enemy that hard for that long. It changes you. I couldn't celebrate for long because there were so many opponents left to go. All that was left for the hard circuit was my old buddy Jurgen. Despite what you might think, he wasn't too bad. Using the same exact ace position, it only took me an hour to beat him, which is nothing compared to the nine it took me with old young Sue. After completing the circuit, I mentally prepared myself for the final difficulty, expert. While waiting for the next match to be set up, I was hit with this. My jaw dropped. I immediately thought, does that count? I mean, to me, when I see credits, that signifies the end of a game. That isn't always the case, but for this Rockstar Challenge, I'm counting that as beaten. Now, I'm still conflicted on whether beating up to the expert circuit counted as completed, but I decided I've spent 25 hours on this game. I saw the credits roll. Let's call that a win. Sadly, there is one more character I was yet to play against, that being Mark from England, but he had further requirements and I didn't care that much. I did give the expert circuit an attempt, but look how our first match went. Yeah, not happening. Plus, I kept reading online how the serve and ace trick doesn't work with most opponents in Expert, and that was the final bit of confirmation I needed to not play. I guess you could say this is a bit of a Midnight Club 3 slash Surfing H3O situation, where beating the game depends on your definition, but I put the time in and I'm content with seeing those credits and calling it. Here's my final game stats for anyone who's interested. Just to make it clear, that in-game clock is useless. I have 25 hours of footage that contradicts the 11 hours the game says I played. 
To wrap it up, even though I struggled with this game, I want to be clear, I really like it. I have an incredible amount of respect for the fact they made a totally serious game on a sport that wasn't represented well in gaming. It feels like they were aiming for a sports title like a Madden or a FIFA or an MLB that accurately represents its respective sport and they knocked it out of the park in my opinion. Let me just list some of my favorite qualities to prove to you how much of a fan I am of it. First off, the detail here is crazy. The player models with their facial expressions, sweat, realistic clothing, and diverse animations all together are really impressive. I really dig the look of every arena as well, with all its actual real brands scattered throughout. Typically, product placement like that would annoy me, but with these smaller table tennis brands, I support their exposure. You also have the awesome ability to slow down and switch up the camera during replays. You have a cool character viewer. You have some really cool obscure cheats, including a one where you you can add a silhouette mode combined with a vintage sound effect, which almost perfectly replicates the original Pong. and some fantastic music that perfectly fits the gameplay. At times it'll swell during epic moments and man does it get your blood pumping. What also does is the crowd, which will sometimes yell support at you or start chanting your name, which really gets you going. I also have to praise the game design of having the opponents actually feel different to play with and against. Like I said, they aren't just skin switches. I learned time and time again, multiple strategies were required to beat the varied cast of characters. The biggest compliment I can give the game is just how simplistic yet satisfying it is. The movement is so smooth, the controls are just the right level of complexity, and the gameplay is just so fun focused. When that spotlight drops and all you hear is the ball bouncing back and forth, it's really a special experience. Plus, this game overall has really strong replayability. I would have to say this is one of the few examples where there really isn't that Rockstar feel. It's a no humor, no story, stationary sports game that is not going to provide that typical Rockstar feel. On a technical level, it feels sort of familiar because this is their first title using their proprietary Rage engine, which many later games would go on to use, but other than that, this is an outlier in terms of feel. So, for Rockstar Presents Table Tennis, know that it's far from my favorite non-GTA Rockstar game, but it's one I enjoy and respect highly. For a title that was originally only $40 retail, you can derive countless hours of entertainment from it. I read online how Sam Hauser called it a sports game with the intensity of a fighting game, and honestly, I couldn't put it better myself. Table tennis was tough as hell, but a very memorable experience, that's for sure. For Table Tennis's difficulty rating, you can probably guess, a big old 10 out of 10. I would maybe say this is the hardest non-GTA Rockstar title up to this point at least. Earthworm Jim, Surfing H3O, Oni, and Midnight Club 2 were tough as hell, but with Table Tennis's lack of online assistance, its numerous super hard opponents, and its gameplay which requires legitimate skill, it might take the cake as the number one most difficult. For the fun factor rating, you might be surprised, but 6 out of 10. Even though the fun started to dip at the start of the pro circuit, I still can't deny the game's super well-designed nature that really does feel like real table tennis. Beating this game is very, very frustrating, but at its core, admittedly fun. With this 22nd game now beaten, the running game completion time total raises to 340 hours. Catch you on the next episode.